This is physical chemistry, part four, statistical thermodynamics, chapter thirty-two, statistical thermodynamics, section thirty-two point one, energy. The average energy of a particle in a many-particle system at temperature T can be calculated given its partition function Q, and this is the formula of Q. The partition function is the sum of e to the power of negative beta epsilon n. Epsilon n is the energy of the nth energy level. Beta is one over k b t. K sub b is the Boltzmann constant. K sub b is equal to the gas constant divided by the Avogadro constant. Ah,、uh, the average energy of a particle in such a system can be derived ah、uh, in this manner. So over here, this is the probability weighted. Average energy of a particle, and the probability is equal to this exponential function divided by the sum of all such exponential functions. And this denominator is called the partition function Q. All right, so this is the Q. But if you look at the top, the top part, this exponential function should be multiplied by the energy of the kth energy level. So you see this epsilon k here. And k is a dummy variable. You can replace this k with any other symbol. So I'm replacing k with n again. So over here, this is on the top. The sum of epsilon n times e to the power of negative beta epsilon n, and then over q. So I want to remind you again: this e to the power of negative beta epsilon n divided by q. So this exponential function divided by q. Is the probability of finding a particle that occupies this、uh, nth energy level? And now we have this equation.、Uh, if we multiply the、uh, right hand side by q and the left hand side by q,、uh, we get this equation: the sum of epsilon n times e to the power of negative beta epsilon n is simply q times the average energy of the particle. And also we can Uh, use a、uh, calculus to derive dQ over d beta, and this is Q. This part is Q dQ over d beta. It's pretty simple. So first, we are looking at a single variable calculus problem, and then、uh, let's look at this. We're taking the first derivative of a sum. It's equal to the sum of the first derivatives. So that's why we put an equal sign here, and then we're evaluating the sum of Uh, the first derivative of exponential function of beta.、Uh, this part is easy. It's just this. And look at this、uh, expression. It's very similar to this expression except for the sign. So now we have dQ over d beta is equal to negative Q times the average energy.、Uh, now, if you look at this equation,、uh, you can realize that the average energy of the particle. Is equal to negative dQ over Q over d beta, and dQ over Q is the exact differential of the logarithm of Q. Why is that? This is because the ln Q over dQ is one over Q. Therefore, dQ over Q is equal to d ln Q. So that's why we have this d ln Q here. All right, and also we can、uh, use beta. Equals one over k b t equation. So beta is equal to one over k b t, and then the first derivative of one over k b t is negative one over k b t squared. Therefore, we get this expression as well. So you can use this equation to get the average energy. You can also use this equation to get the average energy. Both equations are correct. Just whichever. Equation is more convenient for you. Just use that equation. Sometimes you'll see I'm going to express Q as a function of beta, and then get the average energy. Sometimes I use Q as a function of temperature, and get the expression of energy. So again, either way is more convenient for you. Use that equation. Ah,、uh, in summary, we have these two equations that can、uh, we can use to compute. The average energy given the partition function. Again, you can express the partition function in terms of beta or in terms of temperature. 
both equations are correct. Now let's look at the translational energy. So first, the uh, three-dimensional translational partition function is this. Okay. And then the average three-dimensional translational energy is simply kBt squared, the ln q over dt. All right, it looks complicated, but the logarithm of the product of a and b is equal to ln a plus ln b. All right, so the logarithm of a product of a and b is actually the sum of the logarithm of a and the logarithm of b. So by using that uh, equation or that uh, rule, uh, we can separate uh, the temperature term. So this is a temperature term. You see t to the power of uh, 3 halves here from all other terms. Uh, the reason is this. If you examine all other terms closely, you will see none of this depends on temperature. None of this depends on temperature. Therefore, uh, this uh, first derivative is going to be just zero. So that's going to be uh, really easy to evaluate uh, the average energy. Uh, the equation is uh, uh, simplified to this guy. And then we just need to use the uh, chain rule. When we use the chain rule, uh, we'll get this final expression. The three-dimensional translational energy is 3 halves kBT on average. Okay, on average. It doesn't mean every single um, molecule or atom has this 3 halves kBT translation energy. It's just the on average, uh, this is the value at temperature T. All right? So this is our conclusion. Uh, what if we need to know the molar translation energy? Just multiply this number by the Avogadro constant. And therefore, the molar translation energy is 3 halves RT. And this is for the um, three-dimensional world. If you have uh, molecules in a four-dimensional world, uh, this number should be 2RT. Again, in each dimension, it's going to be one-half RT. Uh, similarly, we can derive one-dimensional translation energy. It's just half kBT on average. Uh, the molar translation energy in one dimension is just one-half RT. So every single dimension you have one half RT translation energy on average, on average. Now let's look at two-dimensional rotational partition function of a linear molecule. And this is the uh, partition function for a linear rotor. And then what you need to do is, again, uh, you will just use the uh, uh, equation that relates the partition function to the average energy. All right, so over here, uh, we need to uh, take the first derivative of the logarithm of the partition function. And again, uh, this expression uh, includes uh, this temperature here. So we're going to separate this temperature from all other uh, parameters or uh, variables. So we have LNT here. And uh, if you look at this expression, Kb does not depend on temperature. The symmetry factor or symmetry number does not depend on temperature. Uh, Hc beta uh, does not depend on temperature. H and C are uh, simply physical constants. B is the rotational constant. Uh, Hcb is um, uh, equal to uh, h bar squared over uh, 2i. Um, so anyway, uh, H bar is a parameter, it's a physical constant, it's reduced Planck constant, and I is uh, the moment of inertia of the molecule, and that does not depend on temperature uh, either. So the first derivative of this part is zero. Uh, you just need to evaluate this part, and uh, we can easily find the average energy of a linear rotor. It's just kVT. Uh, the molar rotational uh, energy for a linear molecule is simply RT. Now let's look at three-dimensional rotational partition function for a nonlinear molecule. Uh, we have uh, this expression. It looks uh, extremely complicated because we have three dimensions. The molecule can rotate about the X, Y, and Z axis simultaneously. Uh, that's why you have three terms here. 
and uh, this uh, sigma is the symmetry number or symmetry factor. But again, uh, we just need to separate the part that depends on temperature from the part that does not depend on temperature. So uh, we have this simplified expression here. Uh, this is C, just uh, the all other terms that does not depend on temperature. And then we can evaluate the average energy of a nonlinear rotor, uh, and uh, we just need to evaluate this. Again, the first derivative of LNC is zero, so we just need to look at this part. So in the end, we get 3 halves kBT for three-dimensional uh, rotational energy. Uh, what about the molar uh, rotational uh, energy for nonlinear molecules? It's just 3 halves RT. So in each dimension, you have 1 half RT. And for three dimensions, you have 3 halves RT. Now, let's look at the vibrational energy. Uh, this is the uh, vibrational partition function. It looks a little bit more complicated. And then we're going to use the same uh, uh, algorithm. But over here, uh, there's one thing that's different. This time, we're going to express uh, the Q uh, in terms of beta. And then we're going to just evaluate D LMQ over D beta here. All right. So now we have this... Uh, uh, average energy of the diatomic molecule with only one vibrational mode. So we just plug in the L and Q here, and this is the L and Q on top. And uh, we have this guy divided by this guy. So the division becomes uh, subtraction here. And don't forget about this negative sign here. So I copied the negative sign here. Uh, this part is pretty easy to do. Uh, this part uh, is uh, simply just uh, each new beta over 2 um, uh, with a negative sign. This is because uh, um, uh, this logarithm and this exponential are just the opposite operations. And then uh, don't forget uh, this negative sign here. This negative sign cancels this negative sign. Therefore, we have just the uh, first derivative of positive h new beta over 2. Over here, uh, I just copied this guy here. And don't forget that you have another negative sign here, another negative sign here. So two negative signs, it becomes positive. Uh, now I'm going to just uh, keep deriving this. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, I think we should um, make it a bit more clear to include another step here. Okay, I hope this uh, makes the derivation a bit more clear. So over here, uh, if you take the first derivative of this guy, it's just half h nu. Half h nu is the lowest possible vibrational energy. So even at zero Kelvin, uh, this uh, diatomic molecule has uh, half h nu vibrational energy. And over here, this part, so I was just uh, taking the first derivative of this part. Uh, we'll have to use the chain rule. So we're looking at the logarithm here. So I need to um, include the reciprocal of this term. It's right here. And then I need to evaluate the first derivative of this function. So you have a negative here, and then you have another negative here. So it's going to be negative times negative h nu. It becomes positive h nu. And then times this exponential function, I, I put it here. So that's why I got this equation. Again, uh, this half h nu is the so-called zero-point vibration energy. Uh, zero-point means the lowest possible. So I'm uh, saying this half h nu is the lowest possible vibration energy. And what if um, you know the temperature is not zero K? And then we need to include this part. This part is the so-called thermal correction to the vibration energy. So when temperature increases, uh, this part increases. So I just copied that equation here, and then half h nu, half h nu uh, over here. And then we can simplify this a little bit. OK, so if you multiply the numerator and denominator by e to the power of positive h nu beta, so we get this equation. So I think this is um, uh, the most uh, simplified uh, expression over here. Uh, and uh, beta is, again, 1 over kBT. So you can replace beta with 1 over kBT here. And this is the expression for the vibrational energy of a diatomic molecule at temperature T. So you can see the temperature here, okay, at temperature T. 
again, when temperature increases, when temperature increases, uh, this part decreases. When this part decreases, this denominator decreases. Uh, when the denominator decreases, uh, this whole term increases. So in the end, when temperature increases, the thermal correction to the vibration energy increases. So now when temperature is approaching to 0 K, uh, 0 or 0 K, and uh, we're just plugging 0 here, that means you have e to the power of infinity minus 1 on the bottom. So that means you have 1 over infinity. 1 over infinity is just 0, and this thermal correction is negligible. Therefore, the vibration energy of a diatomic molecule is simply half h nu. Again, we call that the zero point vibration energy or lowest possible uh, vibrational energy. So, again, zero point means lowest possible. So, we got this equation. Uh, when K sub uh, Kb times T is much smaller than H nu. So even if the temperature is not 0 K, if the temperature is small enough, I mean, you can still just make approximation and say, well, the vibration energy is just uh, roughly half H nu. I mean, even at the room temperature, you can make uh, the assumption that the vibrational energy is roughly half H nu. Uh, let me uh, show it to you. At the room temperature, Kbt is, uh, this is Kb. Uh, this is temperature. Uh, Kb is in joule per Kelvin. Temperature is in Kelvin. Uh, so the result is in joule. And uh, this is uh, around 4 times uh, 10 to the power of negative uh, 21 joule. Uh, that's the value of Kbt. Now let's look at a um, vibrational mode. Let's say the typical vibrational wave number is 1,000 wave numbers or 100,000 uh, um, uh, waves per meter. Uh, why did I choose this number? This is because if you have ever uh, taken a, uh, a infrared uh, spectrum of an organic molecule, usually the range is between 400 to 4,000. So between 400 and 4,000, I just uh, you know picked this number just to show you one numerical calculation here. Uh, if the wave number is 1,000, waves per centimeter, we can calculate uh, the corresponding uh, vibration energy. It's uh, roughly 5 kBT. So where's kBT? kBT is here. kBT is here. So the vibration energy that corresponds to this wave number, I think, is 5 times this number, roughly 5. Uh, we just need to know the ratio between H nu and kBT because we just I need to plug in the ratio here. Uh, if this number is 5, and then we're looking at 1 over e to the power of 5 minus 1, it's a very, very small number. Again, this expression is this expression. So really, at the room temperature, if you have a vibrational wave number of 1,000 um, waves per centimeter, uh, this number is 0 0.007. And 0 0.007 is... Uh, much, much smaller than 0 0.5, so that's why we can still use this equation to estimate the vibration energy of such a diatomic molecule at the room temperature. There is a positive thermal correction. Uh, it's roughly 0 0.007 kb um, times h nu, but uh, I think this number is so much smaller than 0 0.5, uh, we'll just uh, neglect this. All right. Uh, what if uh, the temperature is high? Well, if the temperature is very high, uh, when this kVt is uh, so much greater than h nu, and then uh, h nu over kVt is approaching zero. And then we'll have to use the uh, Taylor expansion or Maclaurin expansion uh, to get this uh, approximation. e to the power of x minus 1 is close to x when x is close to zero. So again, when kBT is much greater than h nu, then h nu over kBT is approaching zero, and this exponential function is very close to uh, 1 plus h nu over kBT. And then this function minus 1, this exponential function minus 1 is just this. Well, if you don't believe me, you can just um, use your calculator to calculate uh, e to the power of uh, 0 0.001. Uh, the result is 1.001, all right? The result is 1.001.
Okay, now we can just uh, get this uh, formula here for very high temperature at a very high temperature. Uh, this uh, H nu over KBT is very close to zero, and then this denominator is very close to H nu over KBT. And then H nu over H nu over KBT is just KBT. So this is the thermal, uh, this is the vibration energy of a diatomic molecule at a very high temperature. It's half H nu plus KBT. So half H nu is the zero point vibration energy. Uh, the diatomic molecule has this much vibration energy at zero K. And what if the temperature increases? Well, if the temperature is really, really high, you need to include the thermal uh, correction here. It's KBT. So in summary, the thermal correction to the vibration energy is zero at low temperature. It's KBT at very high temperature. And um, of course, uh, you can tell there's going to be a range. The thermal correction is between zero and KBT for one uh, vibrational mode. And why it's KBT? So you learned that each translational mode has half KBT uh, energy on average. Each rotational energy uh, is half KBT on average. Uh, why it's now KBT for one vibrational mode? Because when we talk about vibration, we're talking about the sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy. So for the kinetic energy component, it's indeed half KBT on average. And if you're looking at the potential energy, uh, it's also half KBT. So together, it's uh, 1 KBT. The molar vibrational energy of a diatomic molecule is, therefore, the Avogadro constant uh, times this. Uh, the result is one half times the Avogadro constant times H nu, and then plus RT. So this expression can be used only when KBT is much greater than H nu. How much greater? Well, it depends on how accurate you want your result. Um, to be, right? So really, uh, I'm going to show you the exact equation here. All right, exact equation here. And then when KBT is much smaller than H nu, uh, let's say if KBT, oh, if KBT is much greater than H nu, uh, let's say 100 times H nu, and then you get e to the power of uh, 0.01. I think that's very close to 1.01. And then you can use uh, the um, uh, Taylor expansion or Maclaurin expansion to make approximation here and say, well, this whole thing is going to be KBT. So again, if KBT is uh, 100 uh, times H nu, you can use uh, this uh, approximation to say this part is equal to KBT. However, uh, when temperature is that high, when temperature, uh, when KBT is 100 times H nu, Usually, uh, the bond is broken. So usually, the bond is broken. So I want to say this is uh, more like a hypothetical situation. All right. So uh, if uh, you get a a thermal correction to the vibration energy is equal to KBT, uh, maybe your temperature is uh, high enough that the molecule. Uh, dissociates already so so we don't usually see this kind of situation all right uh, more likely you'll see uh, the half H nu case so it's just temperature is low enough low enough that we can estimate the vibration energy uh, at such a low temperature is roughly half H nu uh, what if you have a poly polyatomic molecule then you have more than one vibrational mode. Well, it's pretty simple. You just need to know this. Uh, the partition function of a polyatomic molecule with multiple vibrational modes is simply the product uh, of this expression. All right. So I is the index of the vibrational modes. So I is from 1 to uh, 3n minus 5 for linear molecules. I is from 1 to 3 and minus 6 for nonlinear molecules. 
Uh, this is because uh, if you have a molecule with n atoms, um, there are three n minus uh, five vibration modes if the molecule is linear. There are three n minus six vibration modes if the molecule is nonlinear. All right. So what about the energy? Well, the vibration energy of a polyatomic molecule is the sum of this expression. All right, it's the sum. Again, this part is the zero point vibration energy. All right, this is the vibration energy of the molecule at zero K. This is the lowest possible vibration energy. And this part, the second part, is the uh, thermal correction. When temperature increases, uh, the second term increases. Finally, the electronic partition function. So it takes this form. Uh, G sub i is the multiplicity of the electronic state. Epsilon i is the energy of the ith electronic state. Uh, this can be really complicated. If you want to uh, you know, calculate this uh, carefully, you need to uh, get the ground state, electronic state. Uh, you need to calculate the um, excited states, electronic excited states as well. However, you know, fortunately, uh, the electronic energy spacings are typically much greater than KBT. All right, so if you look at uh, this term, for any excited state, it's going to be much, much, much smaller. Uh, than the same term for the ground electronic state. So uh, we can often just neglect all the excited states and simply just say, well, the electronic partition function is equal to uh, just g sub zero times e to the power of negative epsilon zero uh, electronic over kBT. So this is uh, simply the energy of the ground electronic state. All right. You can calculate this with uh, uh, any computational chemistry software, uh, for example, Gaussian, Games, Spartan, Orca, etc. You can calculate that. And also, this G sub zero uh, should be included. G sub zero is the so called spin multiplicity. And if you have uh, just, um, let's say, zero unpaired electrons, then G sub zero is one. Uh, it's called a singlet electronic state. But if you have one unpaired electron, uh, then uh, the spin number is one half. The spin multiplicity is a doublet because uh, you can have uh, negative one half or positive one half in the z direction. So it's a doublet. And g sub zero is two. Uh, let me give you a couple examples. If you have a hydrogen atom or a chlorine atom, uh, G sub zero is two. Also, we can have triplet electronic state as the ground electronic state. Uh, the commonly used example is the oxygen molecule. The oxygen molecule uh, has a triplet ground electronic state. State. All right. So we have this uh, uh, partition function for the uh, electronic energy. So the average electronic energy is negative d times the logarithm of the partition function over d beta. So we just need to evaluate this. Uh, g sub 0 is the spin multiplicity. g sub 0 can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. It does not depend on beta. Uh, again, beta is uh, 1 over kBT. So if this g sub 0 does not depend on temperature, then g sub 0 does not depend on beta. So we just need to look at this equation. You know, this equation is just negative e to the power of negative epsilon zero uh, electronic over kBT. So this is really easy to evaluate. I think you will just get negative epsilon zero electronic. And there's another negative sign here. Therefore, the average electronic energy is equal to the energy of the ground electronic state. So basically, in this statement, we neglect all those excited states. Why? Again, because the energy spacings between the excited states and the ground uh, states are so large that we assume 99.99999% uh, of the molecules occupy the ground electronic state. So it's safe 
to use the energy of the ground electronic state to uh, approximate the average electronic energy. So it's pretty safe to do that. Uh, the thermal correction to the uh, electronic energy is negligible. So that makes uh, this part really easy. Uh, you can neglect the excited electronic states. You don't have to look at the sum of all those terms. Now we can sum up all the components uh, or just uh, look at the translation energy, rotation energy, vibration energy, and electronic energy. So all of them. And for monatomic gases, uh, the translation energy is 3 halves kBT. Uh, it's actually 1 half kBT in each of the three dimensions. For atoms, there's no rotation there's no vibration, so I have zero here, zero here. Our electronic energy over here, it's just the uh, ground electronic state. So this is uh, the average energy of an atom in a monatomic gas. All right, just the translation energy, 3 halves kBT, plus the ground uh, electronic uh, state energy. Now for a diatomic molecule, now you have rotations, you have vibrations. So again, this is the translational energy, all right, three dimensions. Rotational energy is just uh, um, kBT because if you have a diatomic molecule, it can rotate about uh, the, x direct, uh, the x and y axis, but not about the uh, z axis. I'm assuming the molecular axis is the z axis, and then this molecule can only rotate about the x and y axis. Therefore, you have two times half kBT here. Uh, this is the vibration energy. Again, one half h nu is the zero point vibration energy or the lowest possible vibration energy. And this part is the thermal correction. Uh, the thermal correction is usually negligible even at the room temperature. Usually it's negligible, all right? Uh, unless you have a very small, very small wave number. Uh, let me give you an example. If you're looking at KBR, potassium bromide, I think the wave number is uh, only 250 wave numbers. So in that case, H nu is fairly close to KBT. So if you want to calculate the average vibrational energy for a KBR molecule, you need to include this term, I believe. Um, Oh, I uh, sorry about the confusion. So you can have KBR solid. You can have KBR diatomic molecule. All right. Uh, if you have just uh, one potassium atom and one bromine atom, you can form a KBR molecule. Okay, we should not call that ionic because uh, I think the bond is mostly a covalent bond in a KBR molecule. All right, over here, this is just uh, the electronic ground state. Uh, and then we just uh, clean it up. We get a ha five halves kVT uh, for the translation plus rotation. Three translational modes and two rotational modes. Uh, this is the zero point vibration energy. This is the um, thermal correction to the vibration energy. And this is the electronic uh, energy. If you have a polyatomic molecule, uh, we can have a linear polyatomic versus a nonlinear polyatomic. So let's look at linear polyatomic first. Uh, if it's linear, again, there are only two rotational modes. So you have three halves kBT for translation, one kBT for rotation. Together, five halves. And then this is uh, the vibrational energy. Okay, this is the vibrational energy. We have three and minus five vibrational modes. All right? And this is the electronic energy. Uh, what if you have a nonlinear molecule? All right. Well, of course, uh, when you have a nonlinear molecule, it contains more than two atoms. All right. So you can also say nonlinear molecules are always uh, polyatomic molecules. So you have three translational modes, three rotational modes. Now the molecule can rotate about the x, y, and z axis at the same time. So you have 3 halves kBT here, 3 halves kBT here, together 3 kBT, uh, vibrational modes. So this is uh, the average 
vibration energy for all vibration modes. We have three and minus six of them. Again, if you have n atoms, uh, there are supposed to be three n different uh, um, modes, including three translations, three rotations, and three and minus six vibrational modes uh, for nonlinear molecules. Uh, again, this is just the energy of the ground electronic state. Again, we neglect the contribution from the excited states.